Welcome to another episode of Everything Python. Today we will be talking about maps. Maps using Python. More specifically, using a Python library called Folium. Um, maps have been in existence for a long time, right? From 5 or 6 BC, when everyone believed the world was flat um, and they had different methods of mapping back then. And right up to a decade ago, people were probably using maps on paper, right? When you could just buy a map from a stationary store or a kiosk or, um, you know, like from a travel agency, people were using maps to look at the distances between cities or within places in their city. Nowadays, we have Google Maps. You probably use Google Maps yesterday to find out how close is the closest Pani Puri shawl, stall near your house. Anyway, we have established that maps are important. They are pretty useful and they are a lot of fun. And Folium is one of the many Python libraries that can be used to render maps and uh, plot places on them. This video is not going to be about the details of Folium or it's not going to go too much in depth. It's just going to showcase one example using Fo Folium and give you a taste for what it can do. At a high level though, I can tell you that Folium is a data visualization library, particularly a map visualization library that uses leaflet.js underneath. I would highly recommend that anyone who knows or even if you don't know JavaScript, please check out what leaflet.js is at a high level at least and that will help you learn Folium a lot better. I will be uh, putting out a video on the details of Folium soon. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is just have an example of using it. Now, I like Idli a lot. Okay, for people who don't know what Idli is, Idli is a simple South Indian recipe that um, it's a for South Indian food item that is basically a rice cake and it's very popular in South India. Um, what we're going to do in this video is plot a list of locations in Bangalore serving idlis. Okay. When I say locations, I mean particularly restaurants or hotels. And um, why did I pick Bangalore? Because this is my city. This is where I live. And it's easy for me to know which places serve idli there. You can extend it to any food item, any item. Uh, in uh, any city of the world that can be mapped on a map. How I've done this is I have identified the coordinates for around 10 to 11 of these locations using Google Maps. And even in Google Maps, you don't get the location very accurately. As in like you don't get lat long coordinates, latitude and long longitude coordinates for any place. You don't get that. What you get are plus codes. For example, let me show you. Right, if I go to map.google.com and search for one of the places that SN refreshments, for example, what you get here are plus codes. Okay, that's how Google um, lets you identify places. And these plus codes can be converted using a website, an online service into lat long coordinates. And that's what I've done for each of these places on the list. The list of places is there in a small CSV. Okay, and the CSV is over here. Here's the CSV with a list of places, the corresponding latitudes, longitudes. You see two more columns here, icon and color. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. And then the link, right? So the, the Google link is also over here. And I put all of this information in the CSV. If you look, want to look at it as a table, this is how it looks. Coming back to the notebook, so here, so here in the notebook, you see a couple of code blocks. And the very first code block is about importing the packages that are required for this uh, script to run. The first of which is pandas, second is folium, third is requests, and fourth is urllib.parse. The order is not important, uh, but it is important to note that these two are part of the standard Python library. And these two are packages that need to be installed in your virtual environment. If you want to understand how to create a virtual environment and install packages, I'll put the note, uh, I'll put the link to the video uh, in the description. Next, we'll read the CSV that I've already shown you, idli underscore places. This is the idli underscore places CSV. And I am loading that, I'm reading that using pandas. Right, so if you see what is there in this, it says P 
pd is not is not defined which is because i did not execute this if you look at this this is what the csv contained as well place latitude longitude icon color link right so i have eight uh, items on my in my csv next i want to find out the latitudes longitudes and save them in a list separately so i am extracting them locations is equal to df data frame of latitude and longitude and i am putting the values into a list so if i see what is there in this location under location list you see all of these latitudes and longitudes are there in the list okay it's actually a list of lists next what we want to do is we want to find out the latitudes and longitudes of a certain address for example i know that all of these places are there in bangalore so i'll specify bangalore as my test address uh, some place maybe central to bangalore shivaji nagar is one of those central areas so i can specify shivaji nagar bangalore and put the corresponding pin code and using the open street map right which is an open source alternative to google maps uh, you can get the corresponding latitudes and longitudes you don't need a google api key if you use open street map and the format here is equal to json okay so this is what i am using this function is what i have written for getting the latitudes and longitudes from this particular api from open street map i'll pass this test coordinates can be discounted the test address is passed to this function and if you see what coordinates i obtained you will see this is the coordinates for shivaji nagar bangalore and this will become very very useful in a minute um so next thing i'll do is i'll create a map a foliar map with the coordinates that i have obtained so it says that you take you create a map with the center as the coordinates that you have obtained as a location and you zoom the zooming um the zooming coefficient in the beginning is 14 it can be smaller or larger as large if it gets larger it will zoom out that much more yeah, as the smaller it is it will zoom in that much more all right so i am setting it at 14 and i am creating a couple of values here pop up place is equal to icon is equal to all of these are values i have obtained from my data frame okay pop up place is equal to df of place what was the place here it was veena stores right so the pop up place will be all the different restaurants that i have put in my csv the icon will be whatever icon i have set over here there is a certain number of values you can put here star circle all of that um it's all available in the documentation i will put the link to the documentation in the show notes as well in the description then the color of the pop up so what is a pop up right so in a map you want some places to be highlighted or you want them to stand out that is what we call a pop up in foliam parlance okay in, in uh, foliam lingo we call it a pop up and finally link i want to be able to put a link in the pop up description now how do we render that we say for point in range of so we are looping over all the locations we put a marker on each of these locations and these are the variables or the arguments that the marker function takes okay the marker class it accepts location list of point which is a point to be mapped then um what is the description on the pop up right i'm creating a link over here and i said target is equal to blank so that when you click on the link a new page will open and we'll see that in a bit and the corresponding uh, text that you want to put is the name of the uh, text itself pop up place of point all right so pop up place of point um then what sort of icon you want and what color should the icon be finally we'll add the entire marker to the map and at the end right i'm doing a map dot save to html file so that i can render it separately now if you see what happens here this will execute fine but when you see what is there in the map and actually it's a good idea to not call it map because map itself is a keyword and once you uh, you know overwrite map you don't have the properties of the original map right you have all the properties of um, <coughs> the map that foliam offers right so map object that foliam offers so it is better to first unset the map uh, or del map and then if you look at 
what is originally there in map, right? So you'll have, it is a built-in function. It's a built-in function. So if you look at what it is, here it says it is a function, right? Um, and within this, you can uh, take in a function as um, an argument and iterable and stuff, and it'll return a map object. Anyway, so instead of map, you can probably call it map one and map one over here. What happened? Map has no attribute, add child. So I have to put map here and also here, right? So it's done. Now, if I look at what is there in map one, see, it is rendered all of these different um, places, right? So if I zoom in, zoom out a little bit more, you see all of these places, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all in Bangalore. So if I click on what is in JP Nagar, I'll see SN refreshments. And if I click on this, it'll open up the map in a new page as I want it, right? So that is what you can do using Folium. And I'll show you the other places as well. This is one of the many things you can do using Folium, but we'll save that for a more broader um, scoped video. So hope you learned something today. Um, but before I close, I'll also show you what is there in this um, HTML file. It doesn't open over here. Let's open it separately. I'll, I'll open it separately. So as you can see, it is a HTML file rendering the same sort of uh, places that we saw on the Jupyter Notebook, right? So that was the desired effect anyway. Let's go back. So that marks the end of this video. Um, in a forthcoming video, I'll be talking more about Folium, what you can do in depth with it. Um, and also maybe some more examples as well. If you'd like to see me render something using Folium, please leave it in the comments below. Um, if you just liked something about it, please let me know. If you wanted me to add something more, please let me know. And even if it's not just about Folium, if you want to know more about maps, let me know. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for learning with everything Python. Um, see you in the next video as always like, share and subscribe and uh, thank you. Have a nice day.